In order for things to change, you've got to be willing to get up and do something. You don't have to be perfect, but you've got to make a move. Excitement comes from achievement. Fulfillment comes from the journey that got you there. The people, the moments, the work, the sacrifice, the dedication, the commitment, the hard times, the great times, all that it encompasses. That's the fulfillment, the journey. What's the one change you know you need to make that if you made that one change about you, you know that there would be a ripple effect that would stack and completely alter the direction of your life? So what's the compelling reason for you? The one decision is the catalyst for change, but we're not done yet. For a change to be real, you have to condition it. You condition the change repeatedly. There has to be a practice or a habit that you didn't have before that conditions that change. Every single good thing that happens in our lives, everything comes at a cost. There is nothing for free. Everything comes at a cost. But at the same time, everything we struggle with has opportunity and lesson that goes with it. It's always balanced. All you need to know to change anything is A, you're never gonna feel like it. You're never gonna feel ready to start that business. You're never gonna feel ready to have that hard conversation. You're never gonna feel like getting out of bed. You're never gonna feel like it's a good idea to apply for that promotion. We're designed to stay comfortable and safe. So if you know that you're A, never gonna feel like it, and B, that no one's coming, it's up to you. You're not a kid anymore. I'm dead serious about this. So many of you are waiting to be picked by who? The fact that it is painful is the reason that it's working. Everybody else that has to try and step out into this new life faces this same thing too. Mm -hmm. Every single person does. That's why most people don't do it. This is what hard feels like, and this is why most people don't win. So continuing to push through and almost seeing that level of discomfort as a signal, it's like a way marker that's been planted in the ground. Because if it was all just super easy, well, how are you going to get anything different to what everybody else has got if you do the same thing that everybody else does? And one of the best selectors for people not doing a thing is discomfort. So the route that has a lot of discomfort down it, usually on the other side of that, ends up with something which is valuable. How much courage does it take to do something that you're not afraid of? Well, the answer is none. Everybody wants to have courage, but they want the fear to go away first. But that's not how it works. If there's no fear, then there is no courage. So we need to stop viewing fear as something that shouldn't be there or a sign or omen that something's going to end badly. Fear is always showing you the exact place where you will discover great courage within yourself. You can do anything. You can get up any hour, read any book, take any class, make any change, develop any skill, do any discipline. I mean, you can do it all when this how and the why, or when the why starts to grow, the how gets simple. The great word that every great artist, entrepreneur, athlete, icon lives by, and it's, it's patience. Well, sometimes it takes 30 years of anonymity before lightning strikes. Don't do your craft for the reward. Do it for what it makes of you. Whenever you wake up in the morning, today is going to be a great day. You have to nudge your brain, right? We have a conscious mind, we have an unconscious mind, we have a self-image, and your subconscious is paying attention to the words that the conscious mind is saying. And so if you're like, oh, I don't wanna get out of bed, today is gonna be a bad day, you're gonna have a bad day because you just programmed your subconscious mind to do that. Every day when my feet hit the floor, today is going to be a great day. You know what you need to do. Yes, it might suck. It might be challenging and uncomfortable, and you don't want to do it. But that doesn't change the fact that it's what you need to do. Stop avoiding it. Take on some responsibility and rise to the occasion. You're being tested. Prove you want it as much as you say you do. How can you hit a target you don't even 
have. The truth is, ladies and gentlemen, we must have goals if we're going to do anything. Goals do a lot of things. For example, they enable you to chase the blues away. I've never known anybody who was truly depressed, who had specific and long-range goals. And what goals do is they create activity. And you see, activity, as you work towards reaching them, creates the very excitement which you need in order to accomplish or reach your objectives. Logic will not change an emotion, but action will. What if you just did the thing? You know that thing? The thing you've been planning to do? The thing you're gearing up for? The thing you keep telling yourself you're going to do tomorrow? What if you just dropped what you're doing right now and then went and did it? Because let's be honest about what you're doing. You continuously kick the can down the road, then you get to whatever day you said you were going to start the thing, then you find another reason to kick the can down the road a little bit further. Because as long as you're going to do it later, you don't have to do it right now. But what if you did? Serious people, the people that actually achieve their goals, they look for the opportunities to do it right now. Not just this week, not just today, but right now. Then when we get to the day that you said that you were going to start, they're already steps ahead of you because they just decided to do it right now because they actually want to achieve their goal. You just pretend to. You can't stop. You can't quit. You can't say, I'm a failure. You're not a failure. You're not. Trust in yourself and step forward. Put one foot in front of another. Losing is not an option with me. Not being successful is not an option. When you make not being successful a that, that, that it's not an option for you, that's when your life is going to change. Some of y'all are complacent and you cool with not being successful. I'm not cool with that. There's going to come a day when you're going to wish that you had given more. I'm talking about the day that you would have looked over your life and realized that you left more on the table than what you served. That's why every man and every woman must realize that there's something on the inside of you that has to be pulled out. And if you leave something in the tank, it'll become regret. You know, when, when, you, when you say you're going to do something and then you follow through and you do it, not, not, not at the end when you, you, know, you cross the marathon, you finish it, or, or your hands raised. I'm talking about right now. The small steps in between the big successes that everyone sees. No one sees this. Failure is the price of greatness. Failure is the highway to success. You've got to get in, like you've got to leave no stone unturned. You've got to develop this hardiness and resilience and anti-fragility so that you are willing to make mistakes. The discomfort of growth is always so much more value than the illusion of safety. It sounds like a lot of work. Growing sounds like a lot of work. Setting your intentions and goals sounds like a lot of work. Being an excellent person sounds like a lot of work. But What's the alternative? You get to the last hour of your last day and you look back on your life and you think about all the potential and genius you've left on the table. You think about the experiences you didn't have. Part of building is you get to know your strengths and you get to know your talents. That's the reward, not the outer win. If you never discover what's at the bottom of your tank, You'll never find out what the reserve tank looks like. If you're going win sprints, if you don't stop, you'll never get the second win. But if you get the second win, you'll get your second W-I-N win. You can't overcome the lack of effort, but you can overcome losses. Everyone goes through a loss. Anyone that seems undefeated means they never went into battle. But if you can find someone who's willing to go into battle for something that you can live for, a cause, a purpose. You will find that life is worth living because you found someone worth living it for and with. And when you've done that, now you have a right to say, I have a legacy, I have a purpose, I have a cause worth living for. But if you never discover that, you will sit in the end of your days and wonder, what could have been? What might I have been? And the mirror is never kind in those days. Because you see the wrinkles, you see the wasted times, you see the lines that couldn't be defeated. Father time is undefeated, but what you do in time can be defeated. It's never too late for you to begin.
You think that purpose or passion just kind of happens. That's not true. The biggest thing that people don't realize is that it's something you have to be super intentional about. When you wake up every day, you have an opportunity to bring passion into your life. You have an opportunity to decide how you're gonna show up with a sense of purpose today. And this lack of intentionality is the reason why you feel stuck. Should we be ambitious? Of course we should, but not selfishly. We should be ambitious enough to think that we could change the world, turn it into something divine, and we can. You're blessed to be in the position you're in. And even if things are tough, even if you know, you're know you going through a tough season right now, you're still blessed. And I know it's a tough, a tough way to think, but you are because there's something in that season, there's something in that struggle that you're going through right now that is going to help you later in life. One of the most important things you could realize is that you're not alone. You're not the first to go through it. You're not gonna be the last to go through it. And oftentimes it happens. You just, you feel like you're alone and you feel like it's only you and you're in your bubble. Just gotta remember, hold on to that fundamental quality of faith. Have faith that on the other side of your pain is something good. I'm not good enough, smart enough. I'm not talented enough to do that. Some people are. If you lack talent, you can't sit back and say, I start in half an hour. I can't do that. I got to start now. And after I get back from starting, I got to start again. Stop waiting, just start. What are you waiting for? The more you wait, the more you're in the vibration of waiting too. Mm -hmm. The vibration of waiting and the vibration of being are two very different vibrations because there's no future. The future, by the time the future gets here, it's this moment right now. So it's I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. I'm in the vibration of waiting. I'm in the vibration of waiting. It's just you stay there. The moment the reality shifts is the moment you start being it. What you do is you don't run away, you go forward. That's what that's the main thing, because the only thing that can make you do is drive you away from your purpose. You get right back on track and you keep moving forward and you keep trusting the process and you keep grinding, and you keep searching. That's what's going to keep you on track. People are incapable of picking a direction and going. They observe the possibilities. They get paralyzed by all the possibilities. They refuse to move forward on all the possibilities and then time passes them by. So it's very important that you make a decision and you go down that path. You commit to that path. Begin to look in the mirror and begin to make confessions. I am a winner. I am an overcomer. I am somebody that can do anything but fail. But the only thing that can stop you from failing is the belief that you still have time to waste. You must do it now. Because now is the time when winners step up. Now the time is when you change your lifestyle. Now is the time when you dedicate yourself. You don't wait on a calendar. You mark the date by today. This day is the day you change. This is your new year's. This is your new resolution. This is your moment. Because the calendar cannot mark your time. Only you can. Are you interested in achieving these goals or are you committed? And that question transformed my life. If you're interested, you'll do what's convenient. You'll come up with stories and excuses and reasons why you can't. But if you're committed, you will do whatever it takes. You'll let go of your stories. You'll let go of your excuses. You'll let go of all the reasons you currently have that are formulating your identity of yourself. And you'll learn how to let that go and become who you are destined to become. You have to travel light if you want to go high. You've got to give up to go up. That's what this law is all about. Less is more. This law teaches us that there is no reward without paying a price. Pay now, play later. If you play now, you'll pay later. What he taught me 
was invaluable. That was the root of the law of sacrifice. If you give up, you could certainly go up. Life is giving you a new opportunity. Sometimes it's good to take it. And when this lifetime takes something from you, you need to learn to let go. So you need to foster the belief in what you are dreaming so that it becomes a reality, which is very different than saying, I don't expect anybody to believe it until I see it. You need people to believe it before they can see it. Your imagination is there. Don't you remember when you were a child? You believed everything that you thought. You believed everything that your imagination could draw up. But then people told you to be realistic. People told you to come back to reality. People told you what you can and cannot do. And as a young, innocent child, that you can only do so much, it's time to stop believing those lies. You wake up every single morning and you have a choice. You can choose to do the thing that you did yesterday that got you closer to your goal, or you can choose to do something else. That's your choice. So if you're asking me how to stay consistent, you just have to choose to do the thing you did yesterday that got you closer to your goals. The reason you don't stay consistent is because you make the wrong choice. There's no hack. There's no secret. There's no motivational video that's going to make it so you make the right choice. When you have nothing left, and you feel like emptiness is the only thing that you know, it's very easy to fall into hopelessness. But have you ever thought that maybe you have to be emptied of what was so that you can be refilled with what's to be? Maybe this emptiness is what you've been asking for in its infancy. So maybe you're empty on purpose. Find something. Find a thing that you genuinely enjoy because getting good at things you genuinely enjoy is extremely beneficial. The less you challenge yourself, the less you grow. You can't run from discomfort because you think you can't overcome it. Put yourself in situations that force you to improve, build new habits, and destroy the bad ones. In order to feel fulfilled in this life, you always need a dragon to slay. So set a goal, choose your own adventure, and embrace the challenge. Your excuses will destroy you and take everything that you ever wanted from you, if you let them. When your excuses make you feel a little bit better about the fact that you didn't execute on what you needed to execute on, then they can make you feel better. But they're not helping you. They're not helping you at all. You see, what stands between us and achieving even our most ambitious dreams has far less to do with possessing some magical skill or talent and far more to do with how we approach problems and make decisions to solve them. You're living on frequencies. Now, when you think of something, what you've done is you've flipped your brain onto a higher frequency. The very fact you can see it is all the proof you need to know you could get it. What you have to do is raise your level of consciousness to that frequency, and then you will attract whatever's on that frequency, all the good you need to manifest the idea. Any idea that's held in the mind, that's emphasized, that's either feared or revered, so it could be better, good, will begin at once to clothe itself in the most convenient and appropriate form available. It starts to move into form. The way that I see it, given that we don't know the future, given that much of our motivations are invisible to us, we're not a crystal pond that we can see into, you have to have some form of delusion about what's going to happen in the future. You're trying your best to see the way that it's going to be, but given that the glass could be half empty or half full, why not have a delusion that's going to be useful to you? One of hope, even in the face and the understanding that things might be difficult and that there's going to be obstacles. Even when I do not feel like doing something, to do it. That my brain doesn't dictate how. My brain does not get to choose. It choose it, my brain can feel a certain way, but it's not going to choose how I behave all the time. I just can't let it do it anymore. I'm gonna have setbacks, I know. 
But if I'm feeling bad, that doesn't mean I'm doing bad. That doesn't mean I am bad. That doesn't mean that I can't still take some action. Leonardo da Vinci famously said, God will sell you anything at the price of labor. And that is true. So what you have to do is if you want something, you have to work for it. Mm -hmm. And most people that think that the world is based off of luck have never truly worked for something. Not enough to understand that luck does not exist. It's merely a game of probabilities. You work hard, you work more, you work longer, and eventually you can increase your odds of success. And you have to increase your probabilities by increasing your skill set. Do it sad, do it angry, do it heartbroken, do it miserable, do it excited, do it energized, do it happy, do it tired, do it confident, do it discouraged, do it anyway. However you gotta get it done, make sure it gets done. That's what separates the winners from the losers. That's what separates those that get what they want from those that only talk about what they want. So whatever you gotta do, get it done. If the future gets clear, the price gets easy. Because you gotta remember, for every promise, there's a price to pay. Everybody's gotta pay the price. Everybody's got to do the deal. Everybody's got to do the discipline. Everybody has to pay. The price is some classes. The price is a few books. The price is a few disciplines. The price is finding something that'll make your life better, make you grow, make you change, make you develop. If you'll make the promise of the future clear for yourself, the things you want, the places you want to go, the things you want to have, all of the values of life that you could possibly want. If you'll make that clear, make those lists, and be serious about it. I promise you it's an easy price to pay. Anybody can pay it. If you look the same for long enough and you don't want to, clearly something's not working. I think people kind of fear taking that first step into progress because it's gonna result in a change. You know, change can be kind of scary for people. Many times you have to hear, if nothing changes, nothing changes. If nothing changes, nothing changes. And yet, somehow we expect things to change. You think the world is going to get better without you doing anything, but it isn't. Nothing is going to change unless you change what you're doing. What I'm here to, I'm here to tell you is that life doesn't happen to you. We all think that life happens to me, right? Life happens for you. It happens for you. I mean, opportunities will come to you every day. It's either for you, you can remain scared of the opportunities or you can embrace them and take them. He said, if you have enough reasons, you can do the most incredible things. Here's what you might be lacking, a long enough list of reasons. Reasons that drive you, reasons that get you up a little extra early reasons that keep you up a little extra late reasons that make you a team player reasons that make you solve the dilemma of your own challenges and then start helping somebody else with their challenges reasons that's what makes the difference it doesn't matter what challenges it is that you are facing there it is the fundamental principle behind it that you do not run away that you are open for everything that is being thrown at you. There are times in life when you're going through a hard time and you think you're going through a test. That's not the test. The test is how do you go through the hard time? Look, I get it. I know life can be tough. I know there are times when you come up against something, an obstacle or a setback, someone says something or something just simply happens. You need to realize that it's okay. You will get through it. You do have the ability to overcome it and to go forward. 
that's not your problem. You have a vision issue, but it's not the lack of it. You have a vision issue, you have dreams. If I said, do you wanna be rich or poor, you'd say rich. You want your family to be proud of you or not proud of you, what would you say? You wanna be happy or sad? Here's your issue. Your vision is this, it's a depth perception problem. You believe it's further away than it is. You've created thoughts, patterns, belief systems, and actions that perpetually keep it there. What if that's the great lie the adversary uses you to keep you average and ordinary? He uses two lies. You ain't good enough, and it's further away than you think it is. And so you pace yourself. You walk too slow, you talk too slow, you take notes too slow, you do everything too slow. People get around you, they don't get a feeling that you're on fire. They get around you, they don't think their life's gonna change. They get around you, you seem average and ordinary. You're gonna start walking faster, talking faster, and believing it. Don't be afraid to go for something. Don't let everybody else tell you you can't. The only person who knows if you can or you can't is yourself. And you might not be able to, but have the courage and conviction and the balls to go for it anyway. You have to be champion before you become champion. Do you understand that? You have to be the champion in this to be the champion in this. I want to be up more than anybody on the planet want me to be down. To get the best out of yourself. Not competing with anyone else but you. And that's how we improve as a person. Improving ourselves. Here's what you must learn to do. Accept the pain but not the guilt. There's part of our head sometimes that tries to make us feel guilty if we've made a decision that's been painful, not necessarily, not just for us, but maybe even for other people. But it had to be made. So here's the key to accept the pain, but not the guilt. Because it's not pain that destroys you. It's guilt. Visualize it, but also feel it. Like feel yourself there. Close your eyes. Smile to yourself and feel yourself there. Expecting it's 20 years from now, the people, places, and things that could deliver it now, you miss. But when you live in anticipation, I'm one decision away. I'm one new relationship, one new client, one new investor, one speaker, one podcast away from changing my life. When you live in expectation of it, you see, hear, and feel things that were always in your field of awareness that you were oblivious to before. Didn't ask for an easy life. I take what comes. If it leaves, I let it pass. If I've learned anything from life, it's that sometimes the darkest times can bring us to the most brightest places. I've learned that the toughest lessons can teach us the most important lessons, that the most painful struggles can grant us the most necessary growth. So that in times like these, it helps to recall there have always been times like these. People often say they want to go to the mountaintop because the idea of a mountaintop means that you're at the peak. You've reached the zenith of life, you're the alpha, you're the dominant one. But that's not the way life works. Life isn't about reaching a mountaintop to getting to the peak, because if that was it, it would be the day you would die. Everything is done because there is nowhere to go but down. See, life is not about getting to the mountaintop. Life is about going through the valleys, the peaks, and then to the mountain. You are gonna get put into a storm and you have no control over it. So for a period of time, you're gonna get hit with waves of emotion that you have no control over and they're gonna knock you off your feet. But over time, that storm is going to fade a little bit. And those, those waves are gonna get weaker. That storm will pass, that's number one. Just know that that storm is normal and it's gonna pass and then it's gonna still hit you but over time, those waves are gonna get weaker and they're gonna get less frequent. It's never too late to just start over if you're willing to. Yes, it's gonna be a lot of work. No, it's never really gonna be easy, but you can do it if you want to. Like we said, hell is when you look at who you could have been and realize that you're not that person. And then I think if I were to make that man 
What would I put that man through to make him who he is? Like it wouldn't be easy times. It wouldn't be quick wins. It wouldn't even be easy wins. It would be the, the toil and the struggle of achieving and reaching for things that are right out of grasp. Sometimes it seems like people need a little bit more pain before they make a change. And change happens when the pain of staying the same becomes greater than the pain of making a change. Are you where you are because of how you act? Or are you acting how you act because of where you are? If you kind of have like an aimlessness that you feel a lot. Honestly, I mean, that's not fulfilling enough. That's not enough. You don't have a thing. You just kind of float around, you exist. And I think if you have that kind of aimlessness, that should be a call to action to at least start you know, looking for something. There are situations in life that you're not going to win. But that's not the test. The test is, what do you do about it in the end when you didn't win? Did you actually figure out what the real test is? What is really important? All right, you think about it, you meditate on it, you chew on it, you take heart. How are you going to face it? How are you going to do it? And what is it really, really all about? In order to successfully transform your life, commitment must pick up where motivation inevitably drops off. Don't get good, just get done. You'll get good as you go. Get done on your first iteration. Procrastination is a game for weak and small-minded people. Motivation and willpower are never enough to keep you going. Commitment is what is required. Stop trying your best. Stop trying your hardest. Simply do what is required. You become great as you continually ask yourself, have I done what's required to push the needle forward on my goals today? You really want something? Just in my life experience, and when you really want something, you're going to find a way, ultimately. And it might not be today or next year or five years or 10 years, but this thing takes priority and precedent over all other things. Do I like it enough to get out of this comfort zone that I'm in and to make some sacrifices of my time, of my energy, of my effort? In this life, it's not necessarily guaranteed that you'll get there, but I know what's not guaranteed is you being comfy and getting there. That's not happening. It's easy to say I want to climb something. It's difficult once the climate changes around you. What do you do and who do you become when there's no one cheering for you? What do you do when there's no one believing in you? What do you do when there is no one but an audience of one? It's you and your work ethic against the rest of the world. Do you still want to climb that mountain? Mountain climbs are for those who truly understand that it's going to be a lonely road. But once you get there, the view is worth the climb. Life, you have to have no fear. You have to have no fear. You have, to, you have to believe in who you are and what you do and just go fucking get it. I know you might not realize it right now, but one day, all that hard work you're putting in is going to pay off. I promise you. Just keep going. Remember, most people are going to quit. Most people are going to quit. All of your enemies, all the people making fun of you, all the people laughing at you, they're all going to quit. So all you have to do is just not quit. It's so true. Every, you guys think you're weak. You're really not weak. You allow yourself to behave weak, but you're not weak. But you've got to train that up. You've got to push yourself. You have to put yourself constantly in uncomfortable situations. Hold yourself accountable to results and being tough and pushing through and persevering. And when you get to that point where you think, I can't go another inch, you're only 40% of the way there. If you got something that you want, what is stopping you from getting it? 
an awakening that you, that you should have, kind of a self-reflective awakening where you can actually understand the fact that you know, you're not just floating through space in your life. Oh man, you gotta, you gotta realize that you're in complete control, right? You're behind the wheel every day. Life is filled with cracks. Cracks are tragedies, are setbacks, are challenges. But it's through the cracks that the light gets in. So the truth is we have to look at pain and suffering, not as something we invite and welcome, but if it does come our way, you have to see it as the ability for a new birthing, for like a paradigm shift. And all paradigm shifts happen through some disruption. You go higher, you go even more alone. Because nobody is willing anymore to invest their energy in going higher. Because it's becoming more difficult. People don't realize is that when you walk through your journey of life, it's education. The world is your teacher. But the thing is, not all of us have the courage to live this life because we're afraid of failures. We're afraid of mistakes. We're afraid of hardships because that's survival mindset. But what if I were to tell you to place it all on the line, bet it all over your own existence to live your truth? Because through my struggles, I found my truth. The actions that you take, the choices that you make, the decisions that you make determine who you are. We're the ones who get to die. We're the lucky ones. You only get to die for having lived. Most people who could ever exist will never even be born. You won the lottery. Most people will never even know there was a lottery. I just don't get the mentality of being head down sad. Please, take a step back and think about how awesome it actually is. And then recognize that you can attack the world in a totally different way because you were lucky enough to be born during this era. Life is not gonna get easier. It's just that your mind and your body become more resistant, more strong. Same situation, more relaxed. Why? Because you finally start to find a solution that, that is within your reach, within your hands. You cannot change your life unless you change something. If you always do what you always did, you'll always get what you always got. Why bother? Why try? I mean, what difference does it make in the end? Maybe these are some of the voices that you've heard going on inside of your head. Maybe it's something you've told yourself out loud. So why try? What does it matter in the end? It matters because you woke up today and so many people didn't. You woke up today and took a breath. You saw light coming through the window and so many people didn't. It's what you say to yourself on a daily basis. If you say, you can't hurt me, can't hurt me. When you fail, you fall on your ass, somebody bullies you. Whatever's going on in your life can't hurt me. It starts to get in your mind. And before you know it, it's the truth. The hardest thing is to start. Start, man. Most people are frozen with fear and you frozen with the how-to. Quit worrying about if you don't have the education, if you don't have all the credentials. You need the vision and you got to be ready to work. You got to go for it. Endurance is the key. Sometimes you just got to outlash your enemy. He may have you over overpowered. He may have you outnumbered. But sometimes you just got to endure. You got to have that power to be able to just stay with it until the end, until it's all over. Do not quit. The mind is a battlefield. You've got to be able to navigate between the things that have happened to you and the things that you would like to do. You've got to imagine yourself to be more than what anyone can define. 
Open up the mind and realize that your talents, your abilities, your gifts have made you unique. There is no scoreboard, there is no stat that can trap or define or confine you to being what you were made to be at the foundations of the earth in the hands of God that put you on earth. The dreams that you have still exist within you. And that means there is still the capacity for them to become a reality. But so many people have lost that opportunity because they didn't wake up today, but you did. You woke up and you have this chance. You have this chance right now. And the best part is that you don't have to wait till tomorrow. You don't have to stand there and say, if only I had done what I should have done last week, last month, last year, all of that can change right now. Whether it's adversity, whether it's suffering, whether it's pain, if you choose to run towards it, who you become on the other side of it is a newer, higher, more transcendent version of you. But you gotta be willing to go to war against the voices that told you you could not become something. Because the moment you decide you wanna be great, you can be. But there has to be a changing of the mind. You gotta go to battle and silence the voices that have told you that you couldn't amount to anything. Because you mount to more than what people can count. You see, your potential is limitless unless you place the limits on you. The only one you're in competition with is in the mirror, and that mirror reflects whatever you want to see. You're not as far away from these dreams as you think you are. You're actually a lot closer than you think, but because you think it's so far away, you behave in accordance with that belief system and it always keeps it that far away from you. First thing is you need to believe and know that your one decision, one relationship, one meeting, one book, one thought, one something away from a completely different life. And when you know that, when you're, then you begin to look for them. Not waste the experience. If we look at a journey, something that we want to accomplish, don't turn out the way we want it to, we throw it to the side. Nah, man, I'm cool on that. That ain't it. Right? And we waste the experience. And it's like, no, I don't waste that. Learn from it. Even if you're tired, you can still go to the gym. Even if you're annoyed with your spouse, you can still speak in a manner that's loving. Even if you don't feel like doing that hard work, you can still push yourself to do it. Your feelings aren't a choice. Your behavior and your thoughts are always a choice. Today, I want to remind you of a truth that often gets overshadowed by the noise of doubt and skepticism. You were born to be great, and within your heart lies a compass that points to your dreams. It's time to follow that compass, to pursue your passions with unwavering determination, and to silence the doubters and the naysayers. Life is too short to be spent living someone else's dream or bowing to the opinions of those who say you can't. Instead, I urge you to listen to this, your heart. You do anything, it adds up. When you do nothing, it amounts to zero. So take the small steps every day. Do what you're supposed to do. And don't expect some incredible results in one day or two days or 10 days. Worthwhile things, they take time and you go on that mission to upgrade yourself, to become the 2.0 version of yourself, that is threatening, that is scary to the people around you. They don't know this version of you anymore. They can't relate to you. Maybe your story isn't to receive the opportunity from somebody else, but maybe your story is to make the opportunity for yourself to step out on life, to play for loud. No more playing small. You were never made to play small. You were meant to play for loud. And I wanna see it happen because I know that you are capable of it. I don't care what you've been told in the past. I don't care what you've told yourself in the past. But as of right now, right now, everything changes. Go get it.
life is so difficult and challenging that unless you give it everything you have, the chances are very high that it will embitter you. And then you'll be a force for darkness and not good. Well, it's that time of year again. We start to feel real happy. Why? Because we're, we're not going to work. It's a real good time of year. So in that good time of year, we start to feel real good about ourselves. So I start to feel great. So we start making promises to ourselves about, hey, I'm going to lose some weight. I'm going to do better in school. I'm going to be better here, be better there. But guess what happens? The real Merry Christmas happens when all of that noise is gone, it's quiet, and it's you against you, and now all those endorphins are gone. And I promise you, made by getting up early and getting after it to go lose weight, study harder, guess what? It's a lot fucking harder now. That repetition becomes a lot harder now. Stay true to yourself, stay hard. Give it up. Give up that war. You know the war that you have to really fight? is the war against yourself. You have to fight the war against yourself. Now it's not easy to look in the mirror and to change your own life. Fuck everybody that doesn't believe in us. Come on. We're gonna go out. We're gonna become the best version of ourselves. We're gonna inspire other motherfuckers to win. And because of us, this world will change. So my message is very simple. Give yourself permission to be the bad motherfucker that lives inside your heart that you are afraid to tell anybody about. Because we all have that version of ourselves and keeping that version of ourselves is the greatest tragedy of our entire existence. For things to get better, you gotta get better. Don't wish it was easier. Wish you were better. I think the biggest disability that we have as human beings is unbelief. Everything starts with a vision and the man without vision dies. But unless you know three things, number one, who are you and what your value is? Number two, what is your purpose here in life? And number three, what is your destiny when you're done here? Yourself have to be tough. Because the biggest battle that you have is with yourself. What you say to me, and you tell me I, what I can or can't do, will not affect me and discourage me unless I allow it to. If you want to get to your dreams, you want to accomplish your goals, you have to be able to deal with yourself and stay positive. Don't talk to yourself in a negative way. And continue to stay on your path. Continue to get better and better and better. But you can't do that without first being inwardly tough with yourself. The goal that you seek or the prize that you're seeking is in the work that you're not doing. No matter where your goal is in terms of its height or how delusional it may seem, you still gotta aim for it and figure out whether or not you'll get there later. One day in the gym is basically imperceivable. Two days in the gym, you don't recognize any change whatsoever. A hundred days in the gym and you're almost a new person. When you do anything, it adds up. When you do nothing, it amounts to zero. So take the small steps every day. Do what you're supposed to do. And don't expect some incredible results in one day or two days or 10 days. Worthwhile things take a hundred days. They take time. And whatever it is you want to do isn't going to happen in one day. You have work to do. And I know it's just a little bit. I know it's just a little tiny movement forward, but that work is what it takes. What's it going to take? What's it going to take for you to finally abandon the life that's destroying you? To finally be the person that you keep telling yourself that one day you're going to get around to being? What will it take? How many years wasted? How many moments of regret? How many disappointed looks in the mirror? How bad does it have to get before buckling down and doing the work required to be the best version of yourself seems like the better path? Because one day you're going to run out of years to waste and moments to regret. One day, 
one day won't be an option. So instead of one day, how about today? Don't quit when it hurts. Don't quit when you feel like it's hard. Don't quit when you fail. Don't quit when it's impossible, when it's inevitable, when it's unlikely, when it's unpopular. If you're in the valley right now, just I want you to just remember these two words. Just don't quit. Just keep going. That's 90% of the whole game. Just keep going. You know, the, the fact that life is short and can be brutal, can terrify you into hiding and avoiding, but it, it can also, you can flip that on its head and understand that since you're all in anyways, you might as well take, take the risks that are adventurous. Why would you not go for it? Why would you not take a chance? At one point in time, you got to take a chance on you. Everything that hurts you, find a way to overcome it. Everything that you feel is difficult for you, find a way to still do it. As long as you can do the things, stop listening to the mind. It's a lot easier to sit around and make a list of what you're going to do in the future. What's easier? It's easier to take out a pen and a piece of paper and write things down. And so people will substitute that action for the action that will actually change them and make them better and move them closer to that version of who they know they can become. So let's just be careful. Just be careful. Be careful of getting caught in that planning phase of who you can become. Be careful of that planning phase because the planning phase should be about three seconds long. And then it's time to go get after it. Make your move before you're ready. I'll tell you where big dreams go to die. They go to the planning place, preparing myself. And it's the biggest con job we work on ourselves. There are so many bones of big dreams in that graveyard where people, there's always going to be a set of reasons to wait. When you want to achieve the highest goal of all time, you are going to have to learn how to get your ass kicked all the way up that damn mountain. If I want to be way up here, it's going to take a bunch of small micro failures along the way. But you have to understand that that is part of the process. The reality is when you do things that are easy in life, you don't value them as much. When you do things that are difficult and that require you to dig really deep, then you value them more. It's easy to quit. It's easier to try something that's already been done before. It's harder when you don't know what the end result will be. It's harder when you face the uphill challenge and you deal with it. And you face it head on. It's where you build confidence in yourself. That's where you, you build your own self-esteem. You know, things are given to you. You never have a sense of how difficult it is to actually earn it. Regret hurts more than discipline. Because when you're disciplined and you act on the things that you're supposed to do, you won't ever have to look back and say, dang, woulda, coulda, shoulda. So do it now so you don't have to do it later. The most powerful voice you'll ever hear is the one inside your own head because that voice is often fueled by fear and insecurity. Your mind can remind you of the past. It can criticize you and make you question your self-worth, but you can change that. Don't be afraid to question the stories you create in your head. Focus on what you want, and you'll start to see opportunities where obstacles once were. You get up in the morning, what are you going to do today? I'm going to win today. Well, just by saying that you're going to win today, you ain't going to win today. It's a jungle out there. 
See, uh, most of us, we come out to compete every single day. The jungle comes to win because the jungle is always prepared. You know, the things that you think about all the time that you don't tell anybody, right? You can do that thing. You actually can achieve it. And you should believe in yourself. You should believe in those things because they're there for a reason. They're not in your mind. They're not in your heart just to be there. If ever you feel negative or unhappy about anything, you say, wait a minute, I'm responsible. I'm responsible for my life. I'm responsible for what happens. I can't change the past. So I'm not going to spend a second worrying about the past. Your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't be trapped by dogma, which is living with the results of other people's thinking. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice. And most important, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. Everything else is secondary. Your biggest enemy is you. People don't understand it's you against you. The only person that gets in your way is you. Nobody else. Being stuck is a signal that you've stopped growing. And when most people feel stuck, they don't understand that it's tied to a fundamental need for growth. We believe it's an existential crisis and we blow up our lives. For most human beings, what actually will get you feeling like you're not stuck is having something in the future that you're looking forward to. Learning anything gets you back in touch with a fundamental need. It makes you start to feel like things are moving. And from that place of feeling a little bit more empowered, you'll be able to make better decisions about what big things need to change in your life. Your current situation is not your final destination. There's more to your life. And I know right now it's hard for you to believe that, but I need you to believe it. Like everything you're currently facing is building you for something greater. You're more than your struggles, you're more than your pain. I know you feel like nobody understands you, nobody gets you, I know you feel alone and isolated. So I wanna tell you, I'm proud of you for not giving up when it's so easy to. I know what darkness looks like. I know what it feels like to be alone with no motivation, no drive, no passion. And what has to come out of your soul in the darkest of times but if you are able to get up every morning have no passion no drive no motivation and still get up with that kind of fire you will be successful in life I guarantee you that the darkest place someone can be is standing still the darkest place someone can be is when they are alive but they are not living. The darkest place someone can be is when they are no longer making progress. Everyone talks about the destination, but very few people talk about the journey. That's where the iron is forged. In the monotony of doing the right thing day in and day out, your part of the deal is to keep showing up for yourself, to stick around and see what happens when you really go all in. Don't just settle for mediocrity. Just hold up your end of the bargain and watch how life will turn in your favor.
You can't avoid the peaks and valleys in life. They say you can't avoid the peaks and valleys in life. Life will always have the ups and downs, so make peace with it. How hard are you really working? I don't know about you, but I, I don't encounter many people who are completely committed to their craft. In our society where it is very unpopular to have a sickening, completely committed, dedicated work ethic, it's not the norm. I believe people who think this way don't know what it's like to push yourself to the limits. Don't know what it's like to work your absolute best, give everything you have, sacrifice, commit, work hard and that feeling of growth of progress of even reaching a milestone in your journey how amazing that feels consistency is even rarer than talent or enthusiasm every january 1st in the gym rock open everyone's keen to do something they've got these new new year's resolutions they're all enthusiastic and some of those people will be talented but how many of those people end up being consistent long term Death is not waiting behind that door right now. Every second, you are between life and death. One day, it just stays with this, then this is going to happen. So in the moment where you realize it could be my last action right now that I do, having this type of thought on the mind, it could be your last, hopefully, makes you wake up to really focus on the things that are important for you. Because many things are starting to fall away when somebody tells you, look, you only have one more week to live. Many problems that at the moment people are caring about, they will just disappear. Then they wake up and realize this shortness of life. How precious it actually is that we are able to be here. Live your life the way that you want to live your life. Ladies and gentlemen, as I speak to you right now, if you had 90 days to live, how many of you will make some radical changes in your life? If you look at Nelson Mandela, if you look at Mother Teresa, if you look at Mahatma Gandhi, who died with under 10 possessions, these people were world changers. These people were radical optimists. These people suffered because the root of the word passion means to suffer. They suffered for their dream. They suffered for their values. They suffered for their cause. They suffered for their followers. They suffered for their greatness. Game of life, our people are gonna hit you, they're gonna claw you, they're gonna scratch you, they're gonna bite you. It's just the part of life. And instead of taking everything personally, you have to see that it's like a gladiator battle and that some people are bad, some people are good, some people are not, are in between. But stop taking everything personally and try to learn from them. So if you make a mistake, what you want to do, if you have failure in life, something didn't go right, you want to have the, the ability to look it inward and say, what did I do wrong? And a lot of people don't have that inner strength. But if you want to be successful, if you want to get ahead in this world, you have to develop the skill. You have to be able to look at yourself as if you were somebody else, as if from the outside and say, here's how I could improve. Here's what I did wrong the last time I did it. Great life is in front of you. It's not behind you. What you did back there was learn the lessons to get you to where you are at this particular moment right here. Do you know, man, that you can actually mess your life completely up? You can jack it all the way up and you can turn around and get it right. What type of reality are you even living? What type of reality are you living? Are you living a proactive reality where you're continually problem solving and looking at all the different ways that you could manipulate, guide, or push your reality that you want in your favor? Or are you living a reactive reality where you just continually uh, allow what is going to happen, happen, well, I can tell you right now, if you live in a reactive reality, you need to stop. Because if you really want to live the life of your dreams, you have got to start living a proactive reality. So if you're in the woods and you don't know where to go, start walking. 
you got to start walking because the perspective is not going to change. You have to start moving forward. You have to tar- start taking steps in order to improve your vision, improve your perspective, change your perspective, make some kind of progress. And worst case scenario, you figure out that you walked the wrong direction. Okay, now you can go walk in the other direction. And that's, that's going to be fine. But standing there lost and not doing anything is just waiting to die, waiting to starve to death. Don't let that happen. Everything that you are, everything that you're becoming is a resilient pad of growth. On that pad is a launch. That's where you take off. That's where you find out what you're really made of. It's not about waiting until the end and one day you'll go after it. Make today day one. Today is the day that I decided I wanted to be great, so I'm going to do it. I decided I want to go after my goals, after my dreams. That's the mindset that you have to have. Because today is the day you were given breath. I'm here with a purpose and live on purpose. Not off of your resume of where you've been, but on the direction and understanding of where you're going. There's a call on you. It's time for you to answer it. Taking responsibility doesn't mean you blame yourself. It means you become accountable for everything that happened because it's the only way to improve. It's the only way to see real progress. If you're constantly blaming something else for your circumstances, it means you're giving up the opportunity to be in control. It might not be your fault, but it's your job to make the most of every situation and do the best with what you have. So do it, take responsibility for all of it, because that's when things start to get good.